kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, and it's the truth. Yeah. You know, so... Um, with that being said, you walk them through these processes. Okay. Everything has a, there's a pro and a con to everything. And it depends on their motivation on whether they'll accept that pro or accept that con. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'll restate this again. I, I go from the beginning lead generation, start off with driving for dollars and because you have access to the legal news i would be taking down every single piece of information from the legal news that you can put it in a spreadsheet and get it skip traced okay okay then i would follow up as soon as possible because as soon as it hits the legal news other people are going to be calling as well and speed is is your key to that Okay. Mm -hmm. The faster you get to that person that's been in the legal news, the the faster you get it locked up in, under a contract, the better you'll be. Okay. Okay. But I urge this for new wholesalers, do not lie. And what I mean by that, don't pretend that like if you have to say me and my partners are going to be are looking at the property say that because it's true your buyers are your partners okay but what i mean by don't lie is if somebody blatantly asks you are you a wholesaler are you to say sir that is one of our strategies we also do have other strategies as well and that's kind of what i do is i say we have multiple different strategies. I may not know exactly what I'm going to do right off the bat, but we have multiple different strategies. Okay. So we have to run the numbers for all of them. Yeah. And yeah. I said, but whatever I promise you is exactly what you're going to get. Make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, but because you say that seller. I'm saying. Uh, oh, okay. You ask the seller. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? Okay. Okay. As soon as they say yes, oh, I don't care. As long as you give me what we what we promise, I don't care. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the reaction that I get. Yeah. Okay. So so keep that in mind is that how you talk to these sellers. One thing that I listen to on YouTube. I love listening to these type of videos on YouTube and it's called it's live seller calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because nobody can fake those. I mean, they can, but if, if you're looking on YouTube and there's this guy that has an hour long of seller calls that he's been following up for a while. Okay. What I look for is not, what they want you to see i'm looking for the actual reactions to the questions that he's asking okay and how he's responding and that's actually truly how i learned okay mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not very book smart you probably don't know that about me a lot of people don't know that about me i'm not i learn by doing mm -hmm. that's just how i am but I learn very fast by doing. Yeah. I know something works. I do it. I found out it works. Great. Try something different. That doesn't work. Okay. Go back to what did work and, and, and see where I made the mistake. Yeah. Make sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Same here. That's why I'm like, you know, I, I want to like partner up with someone who's been through yep. this process before. Um, 
because I don't want to just be out here spinning my wheels and not getting anywhere. So 100%. Yeah. So yeah, one, one thing that, you know, I'm happy to work with you or help you out. And, um, you know, if, if you want to call it coaching, call it coaching, it's up to you what you want to call it. But I, I'm here to help as many people as I can by giving as much knowledge as I can. Um, and if we can JV and I make some money, you make some money. Great. Have that's awesome. Yeah. You know? So, um, with that being said, I, what do you, so we got the lead generation covered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how are you going to be calling these people? Is it going to be calling from your cell phone? Your like, how are, how, you know, what is it that you have currently that you're going to be, how are you going to call them? Oh, um, I actually do have a business line, a business phone. I have a website also set up, um, okay. which um, allows, you know, you know, once I do my marketing or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that's going to be, um, it allows people to go to the website. Um, they can fill out a quick questionnaire. Um, mm -hmm. If they're interested, and um, like I said, I have my business phone number, so I'll is be this, calling. You know, is this a the, website that you created? Yes. Well, okay. me and GoDaddy. <laughs> so. Hey, right, <laughs> right. Now you don't need a website for this. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. I didn't have a website for a very, very long time, and really, the only website that I have is actually for the podcast. It's really not for oh, the okay. sellers. So oh, it's cool. not even, it's not even for my wholesaling business. It's for the podcast, mm -hmm. you know? So you don't really, there are some people, Oh, do you have a website? Do you have cred, you know, credibility and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's a, I, you know, it, the business is just me, myself and I, and I bring in a finance partners per deal basis, you okay. know? So, okay. and, and that's how I get around that, you know? Okay. Um, if you're looking and I tell them, if you're looking for some big company to, to purchase your house, like a, like, like a, a red rock or, or like some big fun fundraising company or, or, or big fund or whatever, I'm not your guy. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, not follow up with you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but that's just, for me, I'm just, I gotta be able to make money. I do this to make money. Um, but I want to be able to help you out as much as possible as well. Mm -hmm. where we can give you speed and convenience, you know? So, and I also add in some of the pain points that, that they told me that they needed. So like if for some reason they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I add in for the fact that I do all the work, you don't have to, mm -hmm. even after you get the buyer, you're still mm -hmm. the only one dealing with the title company, okay. not the seller. Okay. You're mm -hmm. still, it's not like after you get the assignment done and send it off the title and your hands off and that's it. No, you still have to follow everything through title and you still have to make sure it can close. If there's any issues that pop up, you go back to the seller, you talk to them to see if we can clear those up or you go back to the buyer and say, Hey, we need funding on this day or this day. Can you close here? Can you close there? So on and so forth. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Make sure it closes. It, 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 it makes sense. But like <laughs> that, that's one thing that I get is a lot of wholesaler, new wholesalers. Yeah. Okay. The assignment sign. We send it off the title. Great. Awesome. On to the next deal. But you haven't closed this deal. Like I'm all for keep working on the next deal yeah. because I'm all for that 100%. Okay. But you still have to make sure that deal closes and you have to make sure that the seller is not feeling like that they're being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So how I do that is, is even if I don't have the buyer yet, I'm still constantly updating the seller. Okay. It, keep open communication between you and the seller. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you start to ghost them or not answer their calls or, or, or not update them, they're going to think in their heads that they're being scammed or their friend's an agent. Everybody mm -hmm. has an a, a friend who's an agent, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And now they're in their ear saying, well, let me take a look at that uh, 
purchase agreement and I, I think I can get you more money. And now they want to walk away from the deal. Okay. Yeah. There are ways to protect yourself if that happens. Okay. But the biggest thing is, is that you want to make sure if the seller feels comfortable with you, that you have their best interests at heart, they will stick up for you throughout through thick and thin. I'm going to tell you that right now. Even if say one of your buyers tries to go behind your back and tries to snake the deal, mm -hmm. which I've had that. Okay. And because I had a good rapport with the seller, the seller called me up and say, Hey, this other guy tried to offer me. I, I think it was the guy that you had walked through here. You know, he came to me and he's like, uh, you know, he offered me a little bit more than you did. And, you know, but hey, I, I, you know, I'm a man of my word and I'm, I'm going to honor the deal you have as long as we can close when you say we can close. I say, I appreciate that. And I had another buyer lined up already, mm. you know, and we closed the deal. So yeah. that's where building rapport and building trust with the seller really comes in handy. Yeah. Whether you're doing this virtual or whether you're doing it in person, it doesn't matter. You can still build rapport over the phone. Mm -hmm. There has been so many deals that I have never met the actual seller. Wow. Wow. I've only talked to him on the phone. So let me ask you about uh, earnest money mm -hmm. or um, in between uh, myself and the seller as a whole Correct. seller. Yep. So, um, I know it's different for every state, but what mm -hmm. is that here in the state of Michigan? Can you go into a little bit about that? Sure. So earnest money is essentially, it's the same thing anywhere, mm -hmm. but uh, what it does is it gives a good, it's a good faith deposit. Now you don't hand this straight to the seller. You don't hand this straight. Like a buyer doesn't hand it straight to you. You hand it, it goes to the title company. Okay. Okay. Um, in my contracts, I don't have earnest money deposit. I should, but I don't because I don't even bring it up to the seller unless they ask. And usually the only time that they ask is if they were in an agent themselves before or something, mm -hmm. they had something to do with real estate and things like that. Then what I do is I say, okay, fine. I'll give you X, Y, Z earnest money deposit, but I need a 10 day inspection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then with that, I say, I will put down the earnest money deposit and it will be non-refundable after my inspection. Does that work for you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I negotiate that. Hey, I'll give you the earnest money deposit that you want to make you feel safe, but it's going to have to be after my inspection. I'm already paying for an inspector. I'm paying for a contractor to come out there to take a look, blah, 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 this, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually they agree. Okay. Then what I do is my buyer, if I, when I bring a buyer, I tell them, Hey, you need a, this amount earnest money deposit. And usually it's over, like I put it as over, over the amount that, that the seller requires. Mm -hmm. So if the seller is only requiring 500 or a thousand dollars, I, I may require from my buyer 2000 or 2,500 mm -hmm. and I let them know right away it's non-refundable. Okay. So, and then they have to pay it to the title company within, um, within two business days or within one business day of signing the assignment. Yeah. I thought that there was, um, when you get a home under or a seller under contract, I mm -hmm. thought that there was, um, so, uh, just a little disclosure here. I, sure. I am involved, I'm involved in a, um, a women's real estate, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember you telling yeah. me about that. Yep. So, but they're not based here in Michigan. Um, they're based okay. outside of Michigan. But in some of the trainings that I've watched, um, basically they're like, you know, you get your contract. Here's like, I think she said like $10 and you hand that mm -hmm. money to the person, you know, because the house is under contract or the seller mm -hmm. has the, everything under contract. And um, 
this, this contract's good for X amount of days. And mm -hmm. if they the seller changes their mind, um, they just keep that 10 bucks or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing here? Are we, do we, are we doing that? So no, oh, okay. um, <laughs> the thing is, is that there are some people that, and it might be in different States, but I know it's not here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Some people think that unless I put down an earnest money deposit, the contract is it, it, there's no equitable interest unless I put down an EMD. Okay. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 